suis boule bébé tigre et je suis encore tout jeune. Je ne marche pas encore très droit. Maman trouve ça mal. Ah, salam alaikum and good evening to everyone. Okay. Uh, I'm Arif. I'm from the emergency department. And today, uh, I'm thankful because I'm given a slot to speak to all of you from the heart, hopefully. Okay. And okay. And um, what I'm going to talk about today is about basic science. We are learning basic science now, and the application of it in clinical years. Okay. All this knowledge that you're learning, and how exactly you are going to apply this knowledge. So I am you from the future coming back to tell you, all right, why exactly you need this knowledge that you're reading now, that you're learning now. Okay. But since it's a sleepy afternoon, uh, post lunch, where everybody is usually half drowsy. Okay. So let's just. So the topic of my title today is chicken attack, right? Uh, I'm just trying to follow the, the viral trend nowadays. Okay. So let's watch a video, then we will see how on earth is this going to correlate with our topic today. Okay? Alright, sit back, let's enjoy the clip. Reaction. Japan when Japan has done it again, right? <laughs> they always come up with weird crazy things. Okay, the point of this video, okay, is that I wanted to highlight this guy, Takeo Ishii, alright? The guy behind the video. 
of course with that video now being viral like almost 3 million plus views and now he has come into highlight because of this video and he just got interviewed in Fuji TV for this uh, recently for his success in this video all right but we want to go a little bit about his history he was from Tokyo he had a very uh, he was quite a loner in his in his childhood in school never had much friends and he went to university in Tokyo and he became a mechanical engineer all right a mechanical engineer and then he went to Germany to pursue his, his uh, to further his degree into masters and to complete his mechanical engineering okay but you know what happened to him he met Frank Lang who was one of the best yodelers in German in Germany and he became a yodeler yes he gave up mechanical engineering he pursued his lifelong ambition was to perform in music and he actually became a very successful yodeler in Germany all right and now he is successful and now he has married and has gone back to Japan and now he has become a success in this age at the age of 69 all right so why did I highlight him okay to all of you my dear students now you're in second year right how many of you all feel that currently you are living your dream or you feel you're living someone else's dream or you feel that you're still asking a question what am I doing here <laughs> okay put your hands up if you know your dream now you know where you, this is your dream where you belong now oh good lord we're in serious trouble here okay the thing is okay let me share a little bit of my experience I always wanted to be a teacher right coming from a background of parents being teachers I also wanted to be a teacher uh, my experience came was after form 6 when I was waiting for my results I became a replacement teacher and I really loved it and I loved teaching history subject which is so boring you know people usually love to sleep but I made it so interesting I love history history is my passionate subject I although I came from a science background but my most favorite subject was history all right I don't know what I'm doing here also okay <laughs> So I wanted to pursue and become a teacher, but you know, parents being parents, oh, you must be doctor, you know, Asian, you know, Asian parents, you know, be doctor or don't come back home, you know, all right, <laughs> okay, all right, so yes, I became a doctor, but somehow fate intertwined and with my passion for teaching, I'm finally here in front of all of you, being able to lecture and follow my dream which is finally to become a teacher so i became like a two-in-one all right i managed to become a clinician and also become a teacher to teach awesome students like all of yourselves all right so now what are your dreams by doing medicine did medicine quash your dreams do you have other dreams in place do you want to be a professional dota 2 player <laughs> playing for the likes of eg team secret huh. all right Navi becoming a professional support like Tel, Tel Azik huh? what is your dream the thing is ladies and gentlemen my dear students doing medicine does not stop you from your dream whatever is it that you want this guy will be a living example whatever is it that you want in life you aspire to be a musician you aspire to be an artist medicine will only bring you towards that direction okay but a lot of students always give me this feedback you must suppress your dreams going to medicine means 24 7 of non-stop studying study until blood comes out from every orifice of your body <laughs> practically bleeding from your nose only then you'll be a good doctor okay i'm here to tell you one thing you don't have to be you don't have to be an intelligent rocket scientist to understand medicine medicine is actually beautiful it's an art it's not sub something that you should sit down and mark for 10 hours all you need perhaps is one and a half and two hours and the rest of the day you can do whatever you want you can play your flute you can go running you can you can do whatever it is it that you want so i'm here to clear the misconception on the, the fact that you have to squash all your dreams okay in order just to pursue what you want to pursue now So, okay. <laughs> don't give up on your dreams. Keep sleeping. All right? All right. 
So now, ladies and gentlemen, the one thing that you ask yourself when you get up, okay, what is the one thing that you first ask yourself when you get up? Okay, of course, you know, where's my next breakfast going to be? Is it nasi kat or, you know, okay? But besides that, what is that one question you always ask yourself when you get up? Okay, I don't know. Like, like, okay, for example, B, okay? Always going to deep thoughts. What is my purpose? Whenever you get up, you always ask, ask yourself, in this life, why am I here? What is my purpose? What am I supposed to do with it? How am I going to be of significance in this world full of, you know, challenges and people? And how am I even going to contribute to this society? Is it true? No. Heavy stuff, huh? <laughs> okay, but it, 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 it comes to your mind. Doesn't matter. It comes to your mind. What is my purpose? What am I supposed to do with this life? How do I have any significance of sorts in this massive universe? All right? But uh, the problem is, whenever we dwell on the purpose of life, what comes to you? You become lost. You get confused. You're unsure. You're learning more and more anatomy and you're getting confused. Physiology, you don't understand what the hell is happening. Module after module after module, and you're only getting lost. <laughs> and you don't know how to apply this. You'll be asking yourself, really, you need to learn all of this to become a good doctor one day? Well, I... I'll let you in on a small secret. When you start working, probably you won't even remember 95% of what you learned. 95% is an understatement, okay? And it's, you feel as if it resets and becomes zero back. It's like, where did all this knowledge and information went? I can't even remember what happened in my first year and second year, all right? Let alone my last meal, okay? So now, but you, my dear students, are lucky. Why do I say lucky? You are in a field that you know has got a lot of potential. We have the capability of contributing so much to our healthcare profession. You can make a change in your community. Agreed? Yes. You are all the gifted ones. All right? You are here to make a difference. All right? So we have a path in front of us, paved where we were supposed to go. We know we are supposed to make a difference in our nation's healthcare. All right? Just to put you into perspective, when they, when they did a survey in US and asked them what kind of uh, professions they would like to date, not marry, yeah, date. First in the list was artists, uh, celebrities, okay, pop stars and whatnot, okay? Lawyers were very low, lah, okay? All right. But when it came to marriage, you know what was the number one profession? Doctors, they wanted to get, so they will fling around, but they want to get married to a doctor. Okay? So what does that tell you? People trust us. There's so much trust in this profession. When they come to you in their darkest hour, they just put themselves to you and say, I am here, I've got no clue what's happening to me, I'm deteriorating, please help me. Alright? And they're in your hands. But, along the way, unfortunately, as medical students, as you progress, some do get lost. They get burdened out, they get burnt out. And when the time they reach the clinical years, when they're expected to know more and more and more, and they do not know how to apply the knowledge, then problem starts. Then when you become housemen, I'm sure you can see it in the papers. Housemen are complaining about getting burnt out. Housemen are complaining getting scolded by MOs. Housemen are complaining that they cannot cope with the knowledge. Why? Because some of them, unfortunately, were not mentally prepared from medical school. They didn't know what to expect. And it may happen to some of you, okay? So that's why I'm here today. Not like a saviour, I'm not a saviour, okay? All right? But I'm here today to put things into perspective. What you have learned so far, and how are you going to put things into perspective to actually make some sense of how the future is going to be. But, Rather than just sitting here and talking about values and this and that, you know, talk about mercy. Sorry, mad at you. Okay, All right? Okay. So, so I will go based on my real life scenario. How, along the way in my career, I managed to see how important is it to apply the science, and I will teach you. You will do an exercise with me today on how to apply this knowledge to save a person's life today. 
You're with me? Yes. Come on, come on. A more resounding yes. Yes, yes okay, very good. Okay. okay. This is just to go to show what is happening to you right now, okay? All right. Now, when I was a medical officer, okay, when I was doing my master's in my first year, there was a case. This 30, this, this case is a very important case because that was when, during our first year in uh, master's student, we had to learn basic science, all right? Of course, we learned during our undergrad as well, but here, in first year, you're supposed to know basic science very in, in, in much detail. And how did the application of that knowledge help to save a person's life? All right? Now, a 33-year-old male had a motor vehicular accident. Okay? He was thrown off from the car. And he was unconscious at the scene. Then the paramedics went to bring him to the hospital. So they informed me and said, there's this patient coming in. Please be prepared. So the first thing, alarm bells will be ringing. And then we will be panicking. We will be having palpitations. You know, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? All right? It's very normal, okay? If you don't feel fear, you're not a human. All right? Okay. So it's natural to feel fear, okay? Now, patient comes in. He's got a big laceration wound over his thigh. He is semi conscious. Sometimes he talks to you, sometimes he sleeps away. All right? He's got a big laceration wound for the thigh, bleeding. The paramedics said he lost like almost one liter of blood in the at site they already wrapped up in bandage okay and they just put him on the bed right now his blood pressure is 100 over 70 his heart rate is 120 he suddenly when i was going to see him he became agitated he started shouting at me what are you doing who are you and then he started screaming profanity i don't want to go into the exact words what he said all right he started screaming profanity, okay? Some people got angry. I calmed them down. I, some of us got angry, you know? Some of the paramedics you know, say, say, calm down, calm down. It's okay, we need to save him. There's something wrong here, all right? He started swearing, cursing, started jumping, you know? So at that particular time, with him being so agitated, with the blood pressure of 170, pulse rate 120, with already losing some blood at sight, what do you think is happening? And to save him, that knowledge, you all have already learned. What do you think is happening? Just anything. Just anything. Just pour out your heart. Okay? This is a sharing session. Okay? He's afraid he's going to die. Yes, he's afraid he's going to die. Do you know when you work long enough, when you see a patient, especially in the emergency department, you know somebody is going to die. They have that look. They have that look that they are slipping away. And they are looking at you silently crying for help. Help me. But they cannot say it. You know? Scary, right? <laughs> Suddenly you feel, why am I in this field? Okay, let's just turn, let's just move away. Okay? All right. Okay? But you are there. And he needs your help. How are you going to apply your knowledge to save him? Okay, what else? I need some other opinion, any other opinion. Thank you very much, okay? How about you? What do you think? No, I mean, what do you think is happening to him? He's panicking. He's panicking, yes. Of course he's panicking. Anyone at the brink of death will try to fight back, right? Correct. What you tell that, not today, isn't it? Okay? All right. Okay. All right. So, they will fight back. Nobody will want to go away quietly. All right? No one will want to go down without a fight. So, he's fighting. But you must understand what is going on in his body to, to know how exactly to save him. Any ideas what do you think is going on with him? Uh, you mean in body? Yes, anything. What do you think is happening in his body? Because right now, I want you to apply the physiology that you have learned and realize what is happening to him and how are we going to save him. The knowledge is already there. Just you need to unlock the potential and see. Don't worry, as years goes by, you will pick up the skill. All right? Don't be afraid if you can't get it now. It's okay. All right? 
what do you think is happening no idea right okay when somebody comes with a blood pressure of 100 over 70 and a heart rate of 120 is it normal it's not normal what do you think is happening at that stage he is in shock correct in what stage of shock is he in? How is the body reacting? And why is he behaving such? Okay, this is where physiological knowledge is very important. I'll go through just very briefly what is happening to him physiologically. Then you'll understand how the application of knowledge will save him. Okay, now, he has lost some blood, correct? You don't know how much. Sometimes in emergency, it's very difficult to quantify how much blood a patient loses but he has come to you with a symptom his blood pressure is 100 over 70 he has got tachycardia 120 and he has got his mental state is not normal okay when somebody loses blood your circulation volume is reduced how much blood does a patient have does a person have how much roughly How much blood? <coughs> Roughly around 70 mils per kilo of ideal body weight. Okay? You cannot say yours is 4 liters, mine is 4 liter. Mine should be a bit more, right? Considering size, isn't it? Correct. Okay? So you go by 70 mils per kilo. So for a person that is 60 kilogram, he should be having 4.2 liters of blood circulating. That is why we always tell you to calculate how much circulating volume, how much some blood somebody has at any given time. Okay? Now, he has 4.2 liters of blood circulating. Correct? Now, if he has an injury, that circulation is a closed step, closed circulation. Now there is a leak and blood is coming out. Alright? Although they have already stopped the bleeding, but a lot of blood has come out. You can't see how much blood is lost. So can you tell how much blood is lost? Impossible. But, based on how much blood is lost, you can see the response from the patient. I can already say that this patient has already lost around 1 to 1.5 liters of blood, even without seeing the blood. How? Because in hypovolemic shock, when somebody loses blood from their circulation, okay, active bleeding is one of the causes of hypovolemic shock. Class 1, we have four classes of hypovolemic shock. Class 1 is less than 15%. Class 2 is 15 to 30% of blood loss. So 15 to 30% is roughly one third of his circulating volume. So 4.2, roughly one third is around 1 to 1.5. So he has lost 1 to 1.5 liters of blood. Is that normal? It's not normal. Okay? When you donate blood, most to most they take is how many meals? Okay, around 500 the most. But here he has lost three times that volume. So when somebody loses blood from the circulation, what does your body do? This is important. Okay, the amazing thing about our body, right, is that the moment the blood is lost, you see now your heart has got less blood. When you have less blood, less blood can be pumped to the peripheral tissues. And when less blood is pumped to the peripheral tissues, the tissues get le less oxygen. And this is bad because when tissues get less oxygen from aerobic metabolism, they start switching to anaerobic metabolism. And aerobic, aerobic metabolism gives you 36 ATP. Anaerobic is only 2 ATP. And anaerobic is bad because you get lactate being produced. And lactate is acidic. Is it good to be acidic? Your pH drops, enzymes stop working, cells stop working, and you die. Simple as that. So our body does not want this to happen. So how does our body respond? Our body has got an amazing receptor in the aorta and also in the carotid that responds immediately when the blood pressure drops. Okay? How do they respond? It is called, these two beautiful receptors are known as baroreceptors. They are in the aortic sinus and in the carotid sinus. So what happens is that in you and me now normally, hopefully you're not in hypovolemic shock, okay? Alright? When the receptors are filled, meaning they are properly distended because your pressure is normal, they send a negative impulse 
to the cardiac center, the aortic sinus via the vagus nerve, the carotid sinus, sinus via the glossopharyngeal nerve. All right, sorry, uh, glossopharyngeal and vagus nerve. All right, so they send impulse to the cardiac center in the medulla and inhibit the cardiac center. So the cardiac center does not simply fire your sympathetic output. So your sympathetic output is low, relatively low. But now, when you are in shock, what happens to the receptors? They detect that their feeling pressure is low. Correct? Because the blood vessel is less distended now. Correct? Correct or not? Blood vessel is less distended. So now, there is no more firing. So the inhibition to the cardiac center is lost. Now the cardiac center wakes up, becomes alert, and starts firing. And what happens when they start firing? Increase sympathetic output to help to make the patient compensate. Why is this sympathetic response so important? Because they help to restore the circulation so that the blood sends oxygen to the vital organs in your body, such as the heart, the brain, the liver, the kidney. Otherwise, you will die. When you bleed, if your body does not respond, you will die almost immediately. But why you don't die immediately? Because of these receptors, beautiful receptors, which respond immediately and increase your sympathetic drive. So now, when somebody comes with the increased sympathetic drive, how will they present? There are many cases, believe me, when they see the blood pressure 100 over 70 with a heart rate of 120, they just say, this patient is not in shock. Yes, good, somebody said this patient is in shock. Very good, excellent. You are in year two and you can already diagnose this patient is in shock. Very good. Some people know. Some people say, oh, the blood pressure is normal. It's 100 over 70. It's not below 90 or 60, so he is fine. Why is he shouting? Uh, maybe, you know, maybe it's a psychiatric patient. Lah. Before this, he got gila good. Huh? <laughs> maybe he came out from Tanjung Rambutan and then went to an accident, you know? You know, we tend to make assumptions. Okay? We tend to make a lot of assumptions. And assumptions is what that will eventually kill the patient. So right now, we are going through the physiology in his body to find out why he's reacting such. So now, when the sympathetic fires, it starts constricting all your peripheral vessels and sends blood to the central. So because of that, your venous return increases, your cardiac output increases, so your blood pressure is not allowed to drop. That is why his blood pressure is 100 over 70. But why is his heart rate increased? Anyone? Because increased sympathetic drive will increase the amount of beta-1 receptor activation in the heart. So because of that, increased beta-1 receptor activation, he is going to go into tachycardia. And because your heart needs to pump blood furiously to, because you are leaking and you have less circulating volume. So your heart needs to work faster to send blood so that your organs don't die. That is why your heart becomes tachycardic my heart will go on. <laughs> Correct? Uh, my heart will go on. Okay? Please listen to the song. Very nice song. Okay? okay? My heart will go on. All right. So now, so when he is tachycardic, heart rate is increasing, trying to send blood everywhere. So that is why your BP is stable because you have learned it before. MAP is equal to cardiac output times TPR. Okay, what is cardiac output? Cardiac output is equal to systolic volume times heart rate. And why is cardiac output is maintained? Although the volume dropped, but his heart rate increased. So when heart rate increased, cardiac output increased. It's okay if you don't follow me, it's alright. Okay, but you have learned all this, right? I'm just trying to tell you how important it is. Alright? So now because of that, heart rate, his cardiac output is being maintained. And his BP is still holding on. But he is becoming agitated. Why is that so? Because although there is circulation, the heart is trying to compensate, there is less blood still going to the brain. You understand or not? This is known as class 2 hypovolemic shock. 